Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on the Uber Twin by Cabianca Surfboards. Now I've got two boards, one's a stock 5.6 coming in at 26 liters and this is a custom 5.5 coming in at 25.8 liters. I'm 5 foot 9 and 165 pounds. This is going to be fun. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now the Uber Twin falls into that high performance twin fin board category that I'm in love with. And when I'm talking about this twin fin or other twin fins that fit in this category, it's really about the outline. And I don't want to confuse you guys. When I talk about high performance, we automatically go to high performance short boards and it's about the rocker in the board. And you can see there's not a lot of rocker here. It's got low entry and low exit. I'm talking more or less about the outline. It reminds me of that small wave performance board or the daily driver. You can see it's relatively sleek in the nose area here. So one of the things I particularly like is when I come off the bottom and I want to do a nice carve in the pocket is this isn't going to catch on me. It's going to give me the ability to drive that turn as hard as I want. Now, when we start to move back, looking into the tail, I can't help but stop right in the middle. I'm always trying to figure out where's the wide point on this board. And for me, it's subtle. It looks more centered to me. Now, could it be a little bit forward? What would the benefits be if it was a little forward? Usually we see that on twin fins that have a wider nose, there's a lot of foam forward, and that's gonna be a little bit better paddler with all that foam up here. But because the wide point's front from center, it's gonna wanna carve more. Now, if we were to say this is center, we're going to be back from center, the board's going to want to pivot. And I feel like the Uber Twins kind of like right in the middle. It's the best of both pivot and carve. And as I go into the tail, it's got this little wing right here. And that wing is going to give me something to pivot off of. Then it has a reduction in surface area, so it's actually pulling in the tail so I can continue to do the kind of performance surfing I want to do in the pocket. So that's what my mind thinks about as a small wave performance board or daily driver now one of the things that i noticed about johnny cabianca i reviewed the medina model before and i'm feeling it again on his on the rails is there something unique here i would say they're round forgiving somewhat full right the medina might have had a little bit more flatter deck and a fuller rail and I would say this one's just a tad domed, but still feeling like the rail's a bit full. I would say the apex on the rail's a little bit lower. And that lower apex, I noticed this at Kelly's Wave Pool and just out surfing. When I put this board on rail and I push, that lower apex is penetrating and I can push as hard as I want. And I felt it both on the Uber Twin and the Medina model last time we were doing board testing at Kelly's Pool. Now I want to talk about the bottom contours. It starts with the single concave way up here in the nose area. And as we start to move back under the front foot, I would say it's moderate single. And as we come back in here, right in front of the side fins, I would say right about here, there's a double starting. Now, as I get back just past the side fins, now we're going to start to see a little bit of V. So you're going to see my straight edge rocking that double is continued and you can see as we get closer to the edge of the tail block that the v is now increasing too and it's actually a spiral v because there's double going through the v and that's really going to help it roll over on rail i've talked about v bottom boards or v bottom twin fins what i really like about them is when you get going fast that V really helps the board to kind of settle down. And then when I, when I want to put it on rail, it rolls over on rail real easy. But I really believe that what he's done in the tail here on the bottom contours really enhances the way he has the traction with the lower apex on the rail. Now, when the Uber Twin first came in, I started riding it purely as a twin fin, rode the HP Kills and the HP Twins. Check out these waves.
Now that we've seen a few waves, both the HP keels and the HP twins felt great. When I was surfing the smaller waves, let's say head high and under, I really liked the 5.5. Five. Just a bit quicker in transition, put it where I want faster. And then when I got into a little bit bigger surf, I jumped on the 5.6, just having one inch more on rail line, able to use the rail to give me more drive through turns. And then I kept gravitating towards the HP twins because it's more of a personal preference for me. I wanna get in the lip quicker. I wanna do a high performance turn in the pocket. Not that I can't do it with the keel, but there's something about how fast these fins are rail to rail. Now, what I wanted to show you is this fin. I know it kind of looks like um, a twin fin that you could run with a stabilizer and you can. But what I wanted to show you is, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Aquila's twins and I wanted to just size these up side by side so you could see why I'm not using a stabilizer with the HP twins. This has more fin area it's going deeper in the water and a lot wider base. So when I put this fin in the box, it's going to go past the fin box probably almost a whole inch. So I'm going to have a lot more hold here. And that's enough for me to get the drive I'm looking for, the performance in the pocket. I've removed the stabilizer so it's going to have less drag. I might have a little bit less control, but I'm really getting used to riding these types of boards with a twin fin and no stabilizer. Now I wanna talk about the fins I chose. I started with the Aquila Ipa twins with my stabilizer, and then I switched out of these into these prototypes that I'm working on. Check out these waves. Now that we've seen a few waves, both twin fin sets plus the stabilizer felt great. I like to add that stabilizer when the waves get a little bit bigger. I talked about this board. It likes to be on rail. I can get drive. I've got that traction and hold. And just adding the stabilizer gives me more control and I can even push harder. Now a funny conversation, one of my friends asked me the other day, Noel, I'm surfing a twin fin for my first time. And this guy can surf. He said, how should I approach it? I said, well, what fins are you using? He says, the MRs. I go, are you using the stabilizer or no stabilizer? He said, yeah, stabilizer. And I said, well, then approach it like you surf a thruster. Because technically, it has three fins. Now, one of the things we need to think about is the twin fin has a wider base, a little bit more fin depth, and surface area compared to a typical thruster side fin. And then the stabilizer is a bit smaller. So it's going to make the board feel loose but you're still gonna have stability and control. And the smaller the stabilizer, the less control you will have. So it's all real simple. If you're gonna run a twin plus a stabilizer, you need to think you're basically running a thruster on steroids. So you're gonna have more drive, more hold on the side, and the tail's gonna be a bit more free. Now I wanna talk about this special construction that Cabianca calls Power Roots. It's a stringless EPS foam core, epoxy resin. You can see the carbon on the deck here. That's acting as its stringer or the spine of the board. But when I turn it over, this is what makes it a bit more unique. You see this black line that kind of goes out and around the whole board? Well, they've actually routed out the foam, taken some roving carbon fibers, and put it as an inlay into that foam. And what they're trying to do is give this carbon that snapback at the rail, almost like a parabolic stringer. 
So think about it. When I put the board on rail and the board's flexing, because the rail's engaged and the rail's the first thing to flex, it's going to be the first thing to go back to its natural state. So it has that pop and projection. Now, the other thing I noticed about this construction is both boards aren't super light. I weighed them. They're roughly five pounds. And I've been testing other EPS epoxy constructions coming in at roughly four pounds. So what's the benefit for it being a little bit heavier? Well, it's a bit more durable. I don't have huge pressure dents. And one of the things I noticed is it didn't have a lot of chatter to it. So getting going at high speeds, EPS, foam cores are a little bit more topical. I could set it on rail, hold it, and I wasn't getting that chatter that I normally get. So this construction is feeling great. It's durable. You guys will be stoked. So let's look at some waves together. This is the twin plus stabilizer. Nice bottom turn, top turn. You can see board's rolling over nicely on rail. I can push as hard as I want with good drive through my turns. Nice little down carve. Set this turn up right here. I like the pop and projection on that turn. Now in this little wave, you can see there's some wonk or texture to it. Board's going top to bottom. Great projection snap. You can see the board loves to be on rail and it has a lot of squirt coming off the bottom. This last wave, quick top turn, nice solid bottom turn, finishing strong. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Uber Twin by Cabianca Surfboards. This is a favorite for 2021 and I highly recommend it for that intermediate all the way to pro level surfers, best in one to six foot surf. Special shout out thanks to Johnny Cabianca for sending these boards in for review. And if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.